So I am building a mini chopper out of a Honda Grom. And this is the first time I've done this, so there's all kinds of little hurdles that I'm coming across that I didn't think about in the planning process as I build this frame. And so in today's video, I'm gonna show you lots of those little details that I am discovering along my way. And this is the sort of stuff that is important to the build, important to the planning of the build, and hopefully will provide some value to those of you that are building a frame for the first time or thinking about building a frame. So let's check out where I'm at currently. Follow me. It's this. This is what we've got thus far. We've got the head tube or steering neck welded on and the main part of the frame all done up. Now we've got to work on the wishbone and the engine mount so that we get the rear wheel and the engine on there. Which, uh, which brings us to another topic of discussion which is the frame jig. In a previous episode we had gone through and made this engine mount here, the pseudo engine thing that we took the place of the engine that we could then mount the frame to that. This was all cool and everything at the time, you know, we made it, we said a prayer, hope that it would work. And then, but now looking at it, I see, I could see how short sighted I was because the tube goes straight down through there. And if you look at the other frame, you probably already know we got a problem. This frame has a tube on the bottom, so it won't be able to fit through there. I've got to modify this. I think I'm, I think I'm, I want to make this so that it jets out and then comes down and then goes back in and then goes down into here so that we can still clamp it in and move it as necessary. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and then take this thing out and see if we can modify it. I'll probably make some measurements here first. All right, so here's my modified engine stand-in mount thing. You can see we put a little C-notch in there to allow the new frame to slide in between. It took a bit of time to get that thing done and get it done to the so this is actually straight. I believe this is actually straight all the way through there. Let's get this thing on there. And another sort of realization I've had with this frame jig is that getting it set up on here before putting the old frame on there kind of really just really beneficial for like a thought process more than anything. I'm not going to be using any of these positions basically. This is going to, the engine mount is going to be in a different spot. This is going to be different. I'm going to be changing all the stuff on here. Almost as heavy already as the old one. Oh yeah. This is a mighty nice frame we got here. A mighty nice frame. Let's see, we're gonna have to move this up. Oh, I feel like a professional dude looking at this. Oh, it's so nice. Alright, let's uh let's raise this up a little bit. Shit! Going up, man, going up. All right, so this frame is longer. For sure. Another one. All right, so I've got it set up here so that my little engine stand thing here is level. And then I, also the frame is level as well once I once it's up against the bottom of that frame thing there, that's also level. And that's where we want that. So the engine sort of mount thing is set. My next thing is to move down towards, towards this guy and get this thing set back where it's supposed to be and at the level it's supposed to be as well. All right, so that is it. I've got that thing set up right where I want the axle to be. Point. So the axle is going to be right here. Boom. That will look pretty good in terms of the lines. That one's going to come down like that. That one's going to come over and then go up. What that will look like. Something like that. Like that. All right, some insight into my planning process here as we do the wishbones. We start to tackle that aspect of the frame. This little section that's gonna come down and then bend down here and then the wheel's gonna be back here. So there's gonna be a wishbone like that on the top side here and then there's gonna be another one on the bottom 
as well that comes in and encompasses that wheel. And there's going to be a brace on either one of those that goes across, kind of like this. So this is partly sketched out where I'm doing more detail this time where I've got the dimensions of the actual tubes here, a one inch. I'm using one inch tubes. So I'm making sure I account for all of that, every dimension of that, the inside and outside. And so in between here to fit the wheel, we've got nine and a quarter inches. And then the whole wishbone, I've got room for 17 inches. This is the top wishbone that I'm working on right now. And I did do some planning on this previously. I had a sketch up right here, a more a looser sketch up. And we've got, you can see there's 10 and a half inches space here from the axle forward to that brace. The stock um, dimension like this, this over here we've got from the axle up to this brace here, there's 10 and a half inches basically that, that space. And so I'm trying to, I'm using that same dimension on mine. And so we're just making this new wishbone sort of section here and it's gonna come up and attach to a frame and all that. And so I did have these previous dimensions, and, but now that we've got the actual frame built, I'm reassessing my dimensions to make sure that they fit on the frame we actually have in hand. So now we're looking at this and I'm realizing that my my spacing is maybe not quite as far. And now I'm really figuring out the my degree to what I'm gonna have to bend this thing. So from this line, so basically this line to that line, there's 36 degrees in between there. And I know all this because I've sketched this out in an actual scale to what the actual bike is. So it's like a 10th scale. And then I can put my, my angle finder on here and figure out that that's 37 degrees. And if we come over to here, you can see that I've got the frame up on here and I've been, I've got everything set so that this is nice and level and where it's actually going to be when it's finished. And then I've clamped on this extra tube here so that I can get measurements from the bottom of the frame essentially up to the axle so that I get an idea of how much clearance I'm gonna have on the bottom of this. Because one of the things about this bike is that uh, it's a hard tail and all that and so how much clearance is there supposed to be on the bottom of a hard tail chopper? Well, there's no, there's no standard, of course, this is custom work we're doing. And so everybody does it a little bit differently, but from what I've found online, there's basically anywhere from, from less than two inches to five inches is about the range for custom choppers. I got it set up here. I've got a couple of things I'm trying to square or make work, so to speak, on this, where I've got this angle. This, this curve is really important visually to have this curve continue and be like, a continuous line all the way down to the axle. Can't mess up that curve. And then I'm also trying to keep the wheelbase uh, between this axle and the one that will ultimately be up front here. I'm trying to keep that wheelbase as close to stock as I can. At this point, I think I'm about three inches longer than the stock Grom wheelbase. And so I don't want to go further than that. And then also I'm trying to square from the height of this chopper keep this thing, I want to give it probably, as, I want to make this bike as functional as possible because the lower it is, the slower you have to go around corners. Our front controls are going to be on there and that's what's going to scrape most likely on this bike. I guess I could, one of the things I could put the front controls, I could just put them up higher, right? And that would help give us a little bit more clearance around corners, less likelihood of scraping. But this bike at the moment, about two and a half inches of clearance on the bottom. So those are my considerations in pulling all of this stuff together. And hopefully that's some helpful insight into someone else that's trying to work through these problems. So all that thinking has led to this sketch out here on, I've got a nice sheet of paper, sketch everything out on that. And this is the real life dimensions of what this thing should be. So you can kind of see the wishbone, the axle will be, the axle will basically be like right here. And then it comes up and then we've got this bend here and then we got the brace right there. So I've got some room here for the actual bend to be made. On the axle part, this might be helpful to somebody where I've got, basically I'm planning on using 3 eighths of an inch thick plate for the axle, but then there was a lot of thought and consideration put into the spacing on that axle because the stock, the stock swing arm does not have this differential right here between the actual, the arms of the swing arm and where the axle, I'm gonna have to make spacers 
that go in between there. Because the stock one, if you look at that, you can see this is just straight back like that. And your axle, your wheel goes right in here. So the axle is right straight off of there, um, which allows for some pretty tight tolerances. You can see right here, the spacing on that to this brake rotor is like a quarter of an inch. I need about three eighths of an inch. What will happen if I tried to do this the same way the stock one was done without the spacers on there, I would end up the frame of the bike would hit right here on the, uh, the rotor. So can't do it that way. So that therefore I've got to space the frame out. This is I gotta move this guy out a little bit. And then I have to make some additional spacers in here in order to end up with the wheel centered in between the two arms here of the wishbone. All right, it's now time to break out the bender. Bendy McBenderson. And so next time we'll employ the talents of Bendy McBenderson and start bending up some steel and getting this bike to flesh out this frame a little bit more and make it into the the beautiful thing that it's starting to look like it's gonna be. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.